Hello Duelists, Zach Butler here. Just wanted to bring you the first video leading into the new format. We just received a new Forbidden and Limited list update as of today. And many Duelists are currently scrambling trying to figure out what exactly to do. Previously the deck to beat was most definitely tier limits and it will definitely still be a strategy that will succeed at high levels of play. However, the Kashtira deck is one that I would be personally the most worried about defeating because it is the newest one and it seems to have the most power going into it with all of the support that it got thanks to Photon Hypernova. So with that in mind I actually sat down and over the last couple days I've come up with three basic pillars that you want to look at when you're deciding how you want to combat the strategy and this is able to be applied pretty much to every deck where you just look at the pillars of what the deck does and then you decide which one is the appropriate way to take it apart. So we're just going to go right into it with the first one being to simply take control of their cards. So for those that don't know, the basic Kashtira strategy ends on the Arise Heart with a Shangri Era locking down multiple copy or multiple uh, zones, whether it be your spells and traps or your monster zones. And they've usually taken a card or two out of your extra deck thanks to number 89 Mind Hacker as well as Kashtira Unicorn. That is very frustrating to deal with. However, one of the interesting things though is that there's a glaring weakness in that Shangri Era can only lock your zones if it's still in your opponent's control. If you take control of that Shangri Era, then your zones are unlocked. So one of the things you can do is you can use a card like Mind Control or Change of Heart to target the Shangri Era, and if your opponent allows you to take it, then you can overlay it into an Arise Heart if the Shangri Era has used its effect, which it probably did in that standby phase to summon yet another monster. So that's going to be a problem. So in most of those scenarios, your opponent will actually be forced to use the Arise Heart targeting the Shangri Era to destroy it, turning your change of heart or your mind control into a simple one-for-one -one exchange. Another cool thing with that is actually Triple Tactics Talent. Because it doesn't target, you can just declare that you're going to take a monster, and if your opponent doesn't destroy the Shangri Era or the Arise Heart, you can take either one and push forward with that. I think that'll be probably one of the premier ways that you'll see the mirror matches come down to is cards like Mind Control, Change of Heart, Triple Tactics Talent, like I mentioned. But also, Enemy Controller will be a fantastic way to actually dodge uh, Kashtira Fenrir's targeting removal ability. If you activate a monster's effect and they go to remove it with Fenrir, you can simply change or chain an Enemy Controller and take control of the Fenrir, rendering that completely worthless. So that's going to be the number one pillar is to just take control of their cards, which will be huge in the mirror match, I think. And thanks to cards like Triple Tactics Thrust as well, all of these normal spells like Mind Control, Change of Heart, what have you, are more accessible than ever because all it requires is for your opponent to have activated a monster effect at all, and Shangri Era will have fulfilled that requirement just by summoning another monster in the standby phase. The second pillar is going to be to clear the field. And this is the one I think will probably be the most common in most decks that aren't Kashtira. And what I mean by this is the common usage of cards like Board Breakers. So the Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode, Kaijus, which actually just got a lot better thanks to the forbidding of Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds. You can now use ones that aren't necessarily just Gadarla. So Gamma Steel can come back into the format and other cards like that. Cards like Regeki and Dark Hole will also see play, but you can also put into this umbrella cards like Dark Ruler No More and cards like Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, Book of Lunar Eclipse, and by the same extension, Swords of Concealing Light, although I would argue you shouldn't use Swords of Concealing Light because if you do activate it, they're simply going to activate the Shangri Era targeting the Swords of Concealing Light to destroy it, and then you've lost one card for nothing. It actually goes back into the same vein of thought as to targeting a card with Mind Controller Change of Heart. Shangri Era can simply target it to destroy it. The Swords of Concealing Light will also force that, but in a worse way. One big problem with Dark Ruler No More heading into the new format, though, is that it will not stop the Shangri Era from having locked down your zones because that is an effect that has already resolved and is now just being continually applied, which is why board wipes such as the Raigeki and Dark Hole route 
are better to do than a Dark Pool or No More. You might be wondering why I didn't mention Lightning Storm in this list as well, because it is a board wipe and it's a very flexible one. That would simply be because they're probably going to summon most of their monsters in defense position. Arise Heart has a ridiculously high stat as well as Shangri Era, meaning that they can just wall up in defense and that Lightning Storm would be sitting in your hand doing absolutely nothing, considering that the face downs that they play are not actually what's going to stop you. Another thing to note as well is that cards like Forbidden Droplet, Effect Veiler, and anything that says going or that requires a cost of sending cards to the graveyard actually become absolutely unplayable due to Kashtira Arise Heart being in the format. Because of Arise Heart making it so that any card that would go to the graveyard gets banished instead, you simply cannot activate those powerful cards. And Forbidden Droplet, which has been one of the premier effect negation cards of the past two and a half years, just doesn't get to do that now. So if you have those cards in your deck, I would highly suggest looking at maybe taking them out. One card I would consider overplaying the Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere mode would actually be Lava Golem if your deck can afford to bypass its use of the normal summon because playing around a raw sphere mode is far easier to do than playing around a Lava Golem. In order for the Kashtira player to have played at all, they must have two monsters on the field, whereas they can definitely go get away with just not using Shangri-Ira to summon a third monster in games two and three, and then your sphere modes are sitting there very, very weak. That is vein number two, and that is, like I said, probably going to be the most common one. I would expect to see copies of Lava Golems, Nibiru even, which is very good in this matchup because the standard Kashtira combo actually summons way more than five times before you even get to the Rise Heart. You've summoned multiple times thanks to Rise Heart and all the different Kashtiras, Kashtiria uh, the Theosis. It's a hard name to say. And all of those cards really just lead to a very functional strategy that wants to summon a bunch of cards and it's very consistent however it does have those glaring weaknesses and the third and final pillar that i would say to focus on would be to hand trap them during the last six months we've noticed a decline in the usage of actual hand traps i don't necessarily count the bestials as your typical hand traps because well they're, they're really not however cards like ash blossom and joy spring infinite impermanence and things like that have gone down in usage due to how weak they are against the tier limit strategy overall. Thanks to the Forbidden and Limited list really weakening the tier limit strategy and getting rid of Sprite Elf altogether, cards like Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Chill, Infinite Impermanence, and to a lesser degree Effect Veiler all see an increase in play. However, you want to make sure you do it at the correct times. And that depends a lot on your hand composition. You want to be able to make sure that if you Nibiru, you want to do it as probably as soon as you can. If you're going to use Ghost of Warner and Moonlit Chill or Infinite Impermanence, I would argue that depending on the rest of your hand, you may want to use it on the number 89 Mind Hacker because that gives them the most information into your strategy. And by shutting that down, it makes it harder for them to have an accurate plan as to how to combat your deck. Those are the three big pillars, I would say, if you're looking to beat the Cash Tier deck going into YCS Las Vegas, which I will be in attendance. We will have to see how YCS Leon and the YCS in Mexico do this weekend, and we'll definitely be looking at the results from that to update this video, as well as any sort of strategies we may have going into the February 2023 format post Forbidden and Limited list. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please let me know down in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much.